Hello everybody and welcome back to another new vlog. Thank you for joining me once again. Um, I've got a bit of a question for you that I'd like to ask and I'm going to try and demonstrate the answer to you in some way in this vlog. So I hope this works out as well as I am expecting it to. But my question is, do we need to worry about parallax when we're shooting panoramas in the woodland? Now, obviously, your first question is, what on earth is parallax? Well, what I want you to do for me is concentrate on this area of trees here with the branches all kind of leaning up against the tree. And also concentrate on my head, the side of my head in particular. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to mimic what I would do with a panorama by shifting the camera slightly. And I want you to watch what happens to the relationship between my head and the trees. So here goes, if I just slightly turn that, and then slightly turn that, and then slightly turn that, what you notice is that the trees aren't really shifting that much from the side of my head, and that is basically because of parallax. Now, there's a second part to parallax, which says that parallax is inversely affected by distance. So in other words, if I was closer to these trees then the parallax would work slightly differently I'm going to try and explain that to you as well now just give me a moment while I get closer to the trees so as I walk a few feet closer to these trees now I'm going to turn around and obviously there are the trees behind me just here quite a messy light actually to be honest I don't even know why I'm talking about this one here but basically as I shift the camera slightly as if I would when taking the panorama you'll notice that that gap in between my head and the trees gets smaller with each turn of the camera and that's essentially what parallax does um, the problem of course is that if you're taking a panorama and you're slightly shifting the angle of view every time you take another shot then you're going to have problems stitching the images together when you get them back into your editing software. So I'm going to try and take a few panoramas this afternoon. Probably not very many because I'm losing the light already. And see how that affects how they look. Now that image was obviously those trees behind me. It's not a very good image, don't get me wrong. It's probably not one of the best panoramas that I've ever shot. But it was just there to kind of demonstrate to you how parallax works. Um, I'm going to move on and see if I can take another couple of images. But what I really want to talk to you about is the paradox that's involved with parallax. Now that sounds like a bit of a mouthful. But when we take these images back to whatever editing software I'm going to be using um, I'll try and stitch these together within the software there is always going to be a line or more of programming language written into the uh, editing software itself which actually negates that parallax totally so what it will do, it will stitch everything together and it will use some sort of formula built into the program to make sure that everything stitches together properly. And that's the paradox. The fact is, we don't really need to worry about parallax in landscape photography when taking panoramas. And that's because of the software that we use now. But it is a thing that we have to concern ourselves with. It is something that we have to think about before we take the shot because it won't always work 100% of the time when you get it back to your editing software and the reason for that is sometimes that shift is far too big for the software to stitch together properly anyway I'm going to move on and see if I can find another couple of images now the actual definition of parallax is um, the observation of a subject against its surroundings when the perspective is altered and parallax is also determined by the distance the subject is from the camera and from the lens. So if I'm standing further away from a subject, 
then the different the uh, actual parallax shift that you get is much smaller than if I'm standing closer to the uh, subject because it's inversely affected by that distance. Hopefully now though you are looking at images that I've taken which are panoramas that have been properly stitched together by the editing software that I'm using. And that's the paradox that you get from that. The fact is, because there's a parallax shift in the uh, perspective when you move your camera, you obviously should be getting some kind of parallax shift in the image when you try and stitch those images together in a panorama in your editing software. However, that's not happening. That's what the paradox is. That's been overwritten and overridden by the software itself. So. In reality we don't need to worry about parallax in landscape or woodland photography when shooting panoramas but just to kind of show you that a little bit more I'm going to head off now and see if I can find another subject where I can take a panorama of a subject that's quite a lot further away and hopefully that will illustrate it even better. Now I want to take a panoramic sweep of these trees behind me on the far end of this lake. Look at the colours running through them, they're perfect they are. But obviously using this 17 to 40 mil lens, I can't get a close enough reach to get in close enough to those to get a decent panorama. So the idea is to put on the 70 to 300 mil lens here and get in closer and do a portrait sweep panorama across those trees there. So I'll set this one up now and take this shot. In that last panorama folks the parallax shift was very very tiny or virtually non-existent to be quite honest with you and that's all because the distance from my camera and lens to the subject itself the trees in the far distance was probably somewhere around a quarter of a mile or even more than that possibly um, and that's why you quite often see sometimes landscape photographers will go out with a long lens and they'll climb a mountain and then shoot a panorama of a distant mountain range four, five, six miles away sometimes. And the reason they can get away with that is they know there's not going to be any kind of parallax shift when they shift the camera from one image to the next whilst creating the panorama itself. So I'm going to move on. I think I've got one more image left that I want to take and that may be the last image of the day. I'm back at a spot I was at a couple of weeks ago when there was some lovely late autumn and late afternoon sunlight. I seem to remember shooting this tree behind me with some beautiful light on the one side of the tree which I thought was quite interesting. And there were several shots around here that I took that day um, but now I've come back and there's virtually no light whatsoever. We've got a very cloudy sky. Um, the sun has dropped even further on the horizon than it had at that point a couple of weeks ago. And obviously there's no real afternoon sunlight at all to talk of. So I've come back to here because I think there's a decent composition kind of running from here across towards this tree and a little further out to where the branch goes across the path. Now obviously that's going to be a panorama again, but hopefully I can shoot this one and that will be the last shot of the day. So I hope you like this image. I'm going to set it up now and see what I can do. There it is then folks. There is a parallax when shooting panoramic photos because of the shift in perspective every time you're moving the camera that little bit to make the next image as part of the panorama. But the paradox is that we don't really need to worry about it at all because in general our software will correct that parallax shift when we try and stitch those images together. I've um, shot many panoramas in the past 
and only really discovered one or maybe two that haven't stitched together properly because of that parallax shift. So I hope you've enjoyed this week's vlog. I've enjoyed making it, even though it's a bit of a silly one. Um, and if you have enjoyed it, please remember to give the video a thumbs up and please also remember to subscribe to my channel and I will see you again on another vlog very soon. Bye for now.